Hi Bruins and welcome to another episode of Clayton Science Homework. Um, today we're going to read an article called Tree Thinking. Humans love to sort things into groups. We sort food into fruits, vegetables, meat, fish, and grains. We group the clothes in our closets and sort them by color. We sort vertebrates into mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. We sort seashells found on a beach. For a long time, scientists have looked for systems for naming and grouping the diversity of life. In the mid-1700s, a Swedish scientist named Carolus Linnaeus, 1707 to 1778, organized living things into groups. He studied the characteristics of organisms. Then he grouped them based on their similarities and differences. Other scientists began to look at fossils to study life's history. These scientists also used similarities and differences to classify life. As more organisms were found, scientists began to look for new ways to group them. So here's going to be one of your think questions. I told some of you I was going to add a little surprise today. So here's your surprise for homework. Your choices are you can make a cladogram for this picture of seashells. So you have to come up with some sort of cladogram that helps to organize these seashells by color and shape and size, etc. Or you can research a cladogram online and either draw it in your notebook or print it out and glue it into your notebook so that you have another example of a cladogram to take a look at. So one more time, here's your choice. Either you're gonna sort these by size, color, shape, and make a cladogram to show how you would um, classify these um, seashells, or you can look one up online and draw it into your notebook, or you can print one out from home and glue it into your notebook. All right, next page. A branching tree. About 100 years later, Charles Darwin, 1809 to 1882, suggested organizing life in a tree pattern. The branching tree he sketched suggests that all life on earth is related. Each branching point on Darwin's tree represents a common ancestor that divided into descendants. The root of the tree is the ancestor of all the species on the tree of life. Today, scientists still use Darwin's tree thinking to model evolution. They make hypotheses about the relationships among species using a tree diagram called a cladogram. A cladogram maps patterns of relatedness based on patterns of shared inherited characteristics called traits. To be useful in making a cladogram, a trait must have been inherited by two or more of the species on the tree. It must have appeared for the first time in those species' most recent common ancestor. Extinct species can be included in the cladogram. Look at the portion of the example from the class at the top of the next page. In Linnaeus's time, so here's that example. This is the one we've been using in class. In Linnaeus' time, scientists use similar observed traits to group organisms, so they might group the shark and the tuna. Both have eyes and fins. The cladogram, however, puts the tuna and frog together. This is because their most recent common ancestor had a bony skeleton. This trait, bony skeleton, first appeared in the most recent common ancestor of the tuna and frog. Sharks do not have bony skeletons. This tells us that the tuna and frog are more closely related than either is to the shark. We have to go further back in time to find a most recent common ancestor for the shark, tuna, and frog. As you see on the cladogram, the ancestor had vertebrae. So here's what they were talking about. The most recent common ancestor for the tuna and frog had a bony skeleton. The most recent common ancestor for shark, tuna, and frog had vertebrae. What a cladogram tells us. A cladogram shows the order in which traits appeared. Oops, right here. Um, a cladogram shows the order in which traits appeared. It does not represent a simple line from ancestor to descendant. This is important to think about. The shark is not the ancestor of the tuna and frog. Instead, the shark, tuna, and frog share a common ancestor at a branching point. 
Also, a frog is not more evolved than a shark. Each has different traits that allow it to thrive in its environment. Finally, a cladogram shows that one trait evolved in a group of organisms before or after another trait. For instance, vertebrae evolved before a bony skeleton did. To find out how long before, you need to look at the fossil record. The cladogram does not tell you. A cladogram is only as accurate as the information used to construct it. Scientists may use physical characteristics such as the arrangement of bones in a limb, or they might use the kind of tissues or reproductive structures of a plant. Using only physical characteristics requires careful study. So basically the answer to Maddie's question in first period is in here. No, if you eat a tuna, you're not eating your ancestor. A hypothesis. Consider the hyrax, the manatee, and the elephant. At first, and so the this is a hyrax. There he is, manatee, elephant. Consider the hyrax, the manatee, and the elephant. At first, they don't appear to be related, but the hyrax and manatee are two of the closest living relatives of the elephant. They share a most recent common ancestor. What evidence supports this relationship? Careful observation of physical traits reveals several unusual shared characteristics such as small tusks, similar toenails and bone shapes, and excellent hearing. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid analysis, shows similarities among the hyrax, the manatee, and the elephant. In addition, some 40 million year old fossils in Africa provide evidence that a mammal about the size of the pig, of a pig is the most recent common ancestor of these three species. So there you go, here's that common ancestor that's about the size of a pig. A cladogram is a hypothesis about the relationship among groups of organisms. It represents our best model of evolutionary relationships. It changes as new fossils or genetic information is discovered. What cladograms reveal is that all living things are part of one huge bushy tree. They all share a 3.8 billion year old common aquatic ancestor. As we gather more evidence and develop new methods for examining traits, our view of the tree of life becomes clearer. Okay, so here's the thing question. This one's kind of weird, so I'm gonna change it a little bit. It says, look at the cladogram above, place your finger on the intersection that represents the most recent common ancestor of the hyrax, the manatee, and the elephant. Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do for your think question for homework. I need you to draw this cladogram and then circle where you would find common ancestors. So where would you find the most recent common ancestor for all three of these guys? And then where would you find the most recent common ancestor for these two? Okay, all right. Hope you have a fantastic evening and I'll see you all tomorrow. Oh, don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button so you get notifications of my newest homework videos. Have a great day.